Welcome to Mikunst Hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you results of the detailed testing of the Huanan GX99 8M motherboard. Let's start with the motherboard specification first. The motherboard supports Intel Core i7 and Intel Xeon processors for the socket LGA2011 third version. There are two RAM slots for DDR4 RAM. Registered ECC server RAM as well as usual desktop RAM is supported. There are four USB 3 headers and two USB 2 headers at the back side, two USB 3 ports and two USB 2 ports for the front side, four SATA 3 ports, two 4 pin fan headers, one PCI Express x 16, two PCI Express x 1 slots, one PCI Express 3.0, X4, NVMe slot for SSD drives, 5.1 audio, LAN port, and two PS2 ports. I have tested the motherboard with Intel Xeon E5 2640v3 and Intel Core i7-6800K. Both CPUs are working fine, no issues were detected. With i7-6800K I have tested the following configuration of RAM. Two sticks 8GB each, DDR4-2133, CL14, we are working at DDR4-2600, CL17. Two sticks of 8GB each, DDR4-3200, CL14, we are working at DDR4-2600, CL13. Two sticks of 16GB each, DDR4-3000, CL16, we are working at DDR4-2600, CL18. It's important to mention here that all the timings here are the default timings which the motherboard selects, and it might be possible to tighten the timings. With the Xeon E5-2640v3 I have tested the following configurations of RAM. Two sticks of 8GB each, desktop memory, DDR4-3200, CL14, working at DDR4-1866, CL13. Two sticks of 16GB each, DDR4-2133, CL15, ECC registered server RAM, also working at DDR4-1866, CL13. And the last one. Two sticks of 32GB each, DDR4-2666, CL19, registered ECC RAM, also working at DDR4-1866, CL13. Thus, even though this motherboard has just two memory slots, I can say for sure that it can support up to 64GB of RAM, maybe even more if you can find a memory sticks with 64GB each, but I can't guarantee that. USB 3 ports are working all fine. I have performed my usual test running Crystal Disk Mark with the Samsung T5 external SSD drive and the test passes correctly, no lags, no hands, the ports are functioning well and the motherboard is functioning well. SATA 3 ports are also working well, all 4 ports are SATA 3 and I didn't have any issues with them. It's important to mention that I did not test all the 4 ports at the same time Maybe if you connect four devices at the same time there might be some issues, but I was connecting one SSD at all of the ports, no problems were detected there. Fan headers are working as well. There are just two fan headers, four pin each, and both of them are working fine. If I connect fans to one or two of them, the fan speeds are regulated according to the CPU temperature. If CPU is heating up, the fans are spinning up. If the CPU is cooling down, the fans are slowing down. It's possible to regulate the fan speed configuration through the BIOS, setting up the level of temperature and the level of uh, fan speeds. Unfortunately, speed of fans with 3-pin connectors is not possible to regulate on this motherboard. Unfortunately, I don't have PCI Express X1 cards to check if the PCI Express X1 slot is working, but the PCI Express X16 slot works no problem. NVMe slot also works with no issues. Now, let's go a little bit deeper and uh, talk about the motherboard features. Windows Sleep Mode works on this motherboard with no issues. Linux is supported as well as booting from NVMe drive. Turbo Boost is working perfectly fine on Xeon E5 that I have tested and on Intel Core i7-6800K. Turbo Boost Unlock is working no problem on this motherboard. I had to modify BIOS but it was very easy and on this motherboard that I have received the BIOS chip was not locked so I was able to update BIOS using FPT tool right from the windows. There are already multiple guides how to unlock Turbo Boost, that's why I don't plan to make one. But if you're really interested to get one from me, let me know and I will create 
a step-by-step -step guide how to unlock Turbo Boost on Chinese motherboards. What's important to know that Turbo Boost Unlock is working on this motherboard, no problem. My Xeon E5 2640V3 was able to boost on all cores to 3.4 GHz after such unlock. CPU overclocking is unfortunately not supported on this motherboard in any form. There are no BIOS features for CPU overclocking at all, and Intel Extreme Tunity Utility is not providing any possibilities to overclock. Most likely this motherboard is having some server chipset which does not have any overclocking possibilities. RAM overclocking is also very limited. With i7-6800K the limit was DDR4-2600, and with CPUs which have locked multiplier, such as Xeon E5 2640V3, it's not possible to overclock RAM at all. This means the RAM will be always working at its stock configuration. For Xeon E5 2640V3, this is DDR4 1866. RAM timings are working, but the number of settings in the BIOS is very limited. Still, it's very nice to have at least these main timings, and if you apply the values there, the values are applied. This is very good to be able to tighten timings, because it's not possible to overclock RAM on this motherboard. VRAM thermal performance is quite acceptable. I still do not have any thermometer to check the actual temperature of the VRAM component or its heatsink, but the motherboard has survived Prime95 test with the unlocked Zeonify 2640V3 for half an hour at least, and the VRAM heatsink was not that hot. Unfortunately, the temperature sensors on this motherboard are still kinda weird. Sometimes I can see that they are showing some kind of numbers, but most of the time they are just static and not displaying any meaningful information. In the previous video I was using GTX 1060 to compare the performance of Xeon E5 2640V3 with and without Turbo Boost Unlock. In some of the comments people were speculating that I was heavily GPU bottlenecked and that's why unlocking of Turbo Boost did not produce any meaningful results. This time I'm going to test the same game Red Dead Redemption with the EVGA GTX 1080, still at 720p and still at medium preset, to see what kind of improvements can be achieved in this game with unlocking Turbo Boost for Xeon E5 2640v3. Right now on your screen you can see detailed information about the game settings that I was using to run this benchmark. So if you want to replicate and take a look what kind of scores you will get, you can just take the settings from the screen and apply it on your system. So what do we see in the benchmark result? Minimum FPS is as usual has to be disregarded in this benchmark because it's not very consistent. Sometimes exactly the same configuration can produce 9 minimum FPS and other times it's producing like 46 minimum FPS. So let's take a look at the average FPS. Without Turbo Boost unlock Xeon E5 2640V3 running with 2.8 to 3.4 GHz on all cores, is giving 97 average FPS. After unlocking Turbo Boost, so all 8 cores of the processor are running at 3.4 GHz, we are getting 99 frames per second. It's just 3 frames per second gain. Yeah, maximum FPS is rising from 119 to 131, but that doesn't really make much difference when you have your average FPS 97 and 99. I have got my hands on Xeon E5 1650V3, as well I have got Core i7-5820K, and I will be testing all of those CPUs, including Xeon E5 2640 on 100x99 TF motherboard with a bunch of different games, to see if it makes any sense to do Turbo Boost Unlock or not. Unlock and Turbo Boost in this particular case, for Red Dead Redemption for example, does not give much more compared to the stock. Huan on x 99 8M is a small motherboard. This is does not have much to review, so it's time to go to the conclusion and see what we can get from this motherboard. Currently it's been sold for 75 to 90 euros, which I believe is a bit too expensive for this motherboard. 
If it would be sold for, let's say, 50-75 euros, it would be a real bargain. On the pro side, we have that it's kind of small, so it's nice to operate with it, but at the same side, it's a bad thing, because it's bigger than micro ATX, it's smaller than ATX, so you still need a standard ATX case, but the motherboard is physically smaller, and it does not fit for RAM slots, so it's just dual channel RAM, and if you get, let's say, if you get two sticks, four gigabyte each, Later on, you cannot extend it with the two more sticks of 4GB to get full 16 gigs. Now, on this small motherboard, actually all of the features are working correctly. This, it's not a defective motherboard, I actually like it pretty much, and I could recommend it if you can get it for the right price. Like, if you will end up paying 90 euros, I don't think it's a good option. If you can get it for, let's say, 65 euros, it's a it's a very nice little option that you shall consider. Of course, it does not support CPU overclocking, RAM overclocking is limited, temperature sensors are kind of weird, So, but that's on all Chinese motherboards. And if you're buying such motherboard, I really don't think you shall be overclocking your CPU, just get some locked Xeon and either unlock Turbo Boost or do not unlock Turbo Boost. Now, where to buy this motherboard? Unfortunately, I will not recommend the seller where I bought the motherboard because the delivery was way too long. I had to wait for the motherboard for a very long time. Regarding the alternatives, we still have Honan Drew X99 F8, which is somewhere in the customs and shall be at my place in a week or two, and Machinist X99Z. Currently I'm having some issues with Machinist X99Z, I will try to resolve them and make video about it as soon as possible. All in all, my score for this motherboard is 6 out of 10, mainly because it's a bit too expensive than I would consider to be the good price for this motherboard, and the second is because it has just 2 RAM slots. If it would have 4 RAM slots, or if it would be cheaper, then it would get 7 out of 10 or even 8 out of 10. For the curious ones, you can follow the links in the video description to check out Geekbench and user benchmark results running GTX 1080 on this motherboard and Xeonify 2640v3 with unlocked Turbo Boost. I also have two sticks of 8GB DDR4-2133 installed on the motherboard and timings were tightened to CL11. I think I could tighten it even more to CL10, but then I would have to tickle a bit more. It was not stable all the time. Anyway, that's all I have for you for today. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it, and goodbye.